Good morning, everyone, and we uh, celebrate today, particularly <clears throat> in the Archdiocese of Chicago, uh, the anniversary of the death of Father Augustus Tolton, who was uh, really the first known uh, black Catholic priest in this country. Uh, Father Tolton was born uh, in and around uh, in Hannibal, Missouri, uh, and was born into slavery. His parents were slaves. And uh, he was born into that uh, very cruel and oppressive and unjust structure. And then um, his family ran away. Uh, his father had gone off, had escaped to join the Union Army, was never really heard from again. His mother gathered up himself and his siblings. And one evening they escaped. It was like a scene out of a movie where they tried to, where they crossed the uh, river and came into Illinois and settled in Quincy. And he faced a lot of struggles against uh, racism, trying to uh, practice the Catholic faith his family did. And also within his heart grew a sense of a calling to priesthood. And as he tried to explore that, as he tried to find places to go to seminary, to study, to become a priest, again, barrier after barrier after barrier because of the color of his skin. So even within the church, uh, within institutions of the church, within individual people in the church, there was this racism that he faced. Father Tolton ends up going to study in uh, Rome in seminary. It's the only place that will accept him. And he was studying to be a missionary. Uh, but the Vatican uh, congregation in charge of that school and their wisdom decided that they would send him back to Quincy, Illinois. Uh, they would send him back to be this missionary, in a sense, in his own country, in his own hometown. And it did not work out well there. There were various uh, threats, various, um, you know, continued racial um, problems there. And so he asked to be transferred to Chicago. So he comes to work in Chicago. He comes to work in the Bronzeville neighborhood. He founds a church, a community there, St. Monica's at what is now about 36th and uh, Federal or Dearborn. The church is no longer there, but that's where it was. Uh, and works very hard to build up um, the Catholic faith among the black Catholic community in Chicago. And works uh, so hard that he basically works himself to death. He dies of heat stroke as a relatively young man. And uh, we remember and we celebrate him for the work that he did. Uh, and in a particular way in Chicago, we honor him because he worked here and also because um, his cause for canonization is open. So he is servant of God, Augustus Tolton. Sing and make music to the Lord in your hearts, always thanking God the Father for all things, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who always listen mercifully to your servants in distress, we humbly beseech you, as we give thanks for your kindness, that free from all evil, we may constantly serve you in gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than one ought to think, but to think soberly, each according to the measure of faith that God has apportioned. For as in one body we have many parts, and all the parts do not have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually parts of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us exercise them. If prophecy in proportion to the faith, if ministry in ministry, if one is a teacher in teaching, if one exhorts in exhortation, if one contributes in generosity, if one is over others with diligence, if one does acts of mercy with cheerfulness, let love be sincere, 
hate what is evil, hold on to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, anticipate one another in showing honor. Do not grow slack in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, endure in affliction, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the Holy Ones, exercise hospitality. The Word of the Lord. The Lord is good to all, compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is good to all, compassionate toward all his works. I will extol you, my God and my King. I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you. I will praise your name forever and ever. The Lord is good to all, compassionate toward all his works. Great is the Lord and worthy of much praise, whose grandeur is beyond understanding. One generation praises your deeds to the next and proclaims your mighty works. The Lord is good to all, compassionate toward all his works. They speak of the splendor of your majestic glory, tell of your wonderful deeds. They speak of the power of your awesome acts and recount your great deeds. The Lord is good to all, compassionate to all his works. They celebrate your abounding goodness and joyfully sing of your justice. The Lord is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in mercy. The Lord is good to all, compassionate to all his works. The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So these uh, readings, the reason I have these sheets of paper as opposed to reading from the, uh, the book that I usually have been is because the Archdiocese suggested these particular readings in memory of the life of Father Augustus Tolton. Um, and while I think they are excellent for that, uh, since I've already talked a little bit about him before Mass began, Really, uh, I'm also very much struck at how appropriate these readings are for us here in Elk Grove Village, particularly for us Catholic community um, of Queen of the Rosary and St. Julian as we are beginning this merging process and looking at what it's going to mean for us to come together and what that can mean for our witness to our broader community and beyond. Think about certainly what St. Paul says here, right? If we are one body, but we are many parts, that's certainly true. And that's true even much broader than ourselves, right? Where there is one faith, there is one body of Christ, and all of us individually, and then even together in bits and pieces here and there in our parishes and in our institutions, we are all part of this same thing, right? And so often in our past, we've built up our parishes by this kind of rivalry with one another, but this kind of rivalry uh, usually uh, is not the, the kind that's mentioned in the scriptures, right? St. Paul does in some ways, right? He, he mentions this. He says, uh, anticipate one another in showing honor, right? Anticipate one another in showing honor. Meaning, how can I honor somebody else rather than looking to honor myself? How can the people who have been parishioners of just Queen of the Rosary try and anticipate and show honor to the people who have been parishioners of St. Julian. How can the people who have been just parishioners of St. Julian work to try and anticipate and show honor to those who have been parishioners of just Queen of the Rosary, particularly now that it is one community? But we know that these lines uh, and these identities sort of still exist. We're working to build this bigger and broader identity. We have different gifts. Our spaces, our campuses, our buildings are very different. We may have some ministries that are done very differently. This doesn't mean that one is better than another, 
but we have to look at exercising the gifts that each one of us has, the gift that each uh, community has had as we come together into one community. Do not grow slack in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Right. If you want to just, in general, a good outline of what to do for the Christian life, uh, you could read this part of St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Huh? But I want to come to the uh, gospel as well here. Um, because there's a reason for all this, right? Not simply because it's good to do these kinds of things, but why is it very important, or why should it be very important for us as Catholics to want to have a good and loving and positive experience of this coming together, not only for ourselves, but because of the witness that it will give to the community of Elk Grove Village as well, right? It can be very easy to let our own um, squabbles and struggles and histories and all these sorts of things color this whole process as we talk to other friends, as we talk to neighbors, right? And then we can think about what will people say about us in this community, right? When they think about these two communities, these two Catholic communities, previously separate, now coming together, will they be able to look at us and say, wow, they really did that in such a loving and beautiful way and in such a powerful way that there must be something there. There must be something of the Spirit active there, and I want to know what that is. Because if I, you know, uh, people might think, okay, if I were in my church and my church were combining with another church, then I might feel anger, right? I might have this tension, I might have this suspicion, and we might have all those things as well. But can we allow God to let those melt away so that we can give that witness and be that shining light for people, for others? I think that's a very important factor that we should consider as well. So as we celebrate today, we uh, ask through the intercession of uh, Father Tolton, Father Augustus Tolton, certainly for an end to these kinds of racial divides and struggles and injustices that occur in our country and around the world. But we also ask him, uh, more broadly speaking for ourselves, to develop this sense of unity and this coming together. And now we bring our prayers and our petitions before our loving God and Father. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop, Cardinal Supich, and for all leaders uh, in the Church, that they may help us see what it means to live this life in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our civil and government leaders, that especially they may work to end racial uh, injustices and biases and help promotes uh, people living in true harmony and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us in the uh, Catholic community of Elk Grove Village, that as we embark on this process of unification, that we may also do so um, in love and togetherness and unity and outdo one another in showing honor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick or suffering, especially those in our own parish community and our family and friends, uh, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, uh, may they see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Chris Joukowsky and for all parishioners of St. Julian and Queen of the Rosary churches, as we, uh, who we remember at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God and Father, hear the prayers we bring before you this day and answer them according to your will, for we make them in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For to the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gave us your Son to rescue us graciously from death and from every evil, accept, we pray, in mercy this sacrifice, which we offer you in thanksgiving for our deliverance from distress, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in His fullness. For though He was in the form of God, He emptied Himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. If you'd like to do so, you can write a comment that says, Peace to those who are also watching. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The chalice of salvation I will raise, and I will call on the name of the Lord. We pray also this prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through this bread of life are pleased to free your servants from the bond of sin and in your compassion to restore their strength, grant us to advance without hindrance towards the hope of glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. We also uh, have this prayer which is written uh, by Bishop Perry for the canonization of Father Tolton, and so the Archdiocese has invited us to pray that together now. You can find more information about his life. Uh, there's a website, I believe it's toltoncanonization.org, or you might be able to go to tolton.archchicago.org, 
Uh, but if you just look up Father Augustus Tolton, um, you'll be able to find more information about his life. It's really an incredible story, and I would encourage you to read it. O oh God, we give you thanks for your servant and priest, Father Augustus Tolton, who labored among us in times of contradiction, times that were both beautiful and paradoxical. His ministry helped lay the foundation for a truly Catholic gathering in faith in our time. We stand in the shadow of his ministry. May his life continue to inspire us and imbue us with that confidence and hope that will forge a new evangelization for the church we love. Father in heaven, Father Tolton's suffering service sheds light upon our sorrows. We see them through the prism of your son's passion and death. If it be your will, O God, glorify your servant, Father Tolton, by granting the favor I now request through his intercession. You may now offer whatever intercession it is, whatever requests, to God through the hands of Father Tolton. so that all may know the goodness of this priest, whose memory looms large in the church he loved. Complete what you have begun in us, that we might work for the fulfillment of your kingdom. Not to us the glory, but glory to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are our God, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. Also, just one other uh, bit of good positive news is that I finally heard from the uh, placement board yesterday, and so we will have an associate priest who will be assigned here uh, beginning on July 18th. His name is Father Louis Mboe, and he is uh, currently, I believe, at St. Stephen's in Des Plaines, and before that has worked in various parishes around the Archdiocese of Chicago. So we look forward to uh, welcoming him uh, next weekend as he begins also with us on this journey uh, to bring together this Catholic community of Elk Grove Village. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.